do any of you guys have any party tricks? I have a party trick. Are you ready? I am a master contortionist, meaning that I can twist myself into any which way is needed in order to get someone to like me. Now, this started pretty early in my life. I learned the trick pretty early, but where I perfected it was at Emerson College. Emerson was a communication school, and as such, we were required to take a course called Voice and Articulation. I remember I walked into the class straight out of Queens, New York, and I said, I don't understand why does anyone need a class in voice and articulation, right? We're from Queens, hello. So in that class, I learned way more than just how to not sound like Fran Drescher, okay? I learned that I could adapt how I spoke to cater to the audience to which I was speaking. And by the way, I also learned how to do this with my appearance. I finally landed on the signature ponytail carry. You see, ponytail carry looks just put together enough to be professional, but is also casual enough to appear non-threatening and sort of acceptable. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a look. You know, all of this focus on likability served me really well. It was how, with very little experience and almost no money, I was able to start, scale, and ultimately sell a social media agency. Is it any wonder that the agency's name was likable? Likeability has served me really well in my life, and the data will show you that it serves others well too. In fact, when you look at, there was a study that looked at interview candidates, and they had two different styles of interviewing. One was self-promotion, which is talking about your accomplishments. Normal? Normal. The other was ingratiation. Ingratiation means that you were focusing on getting the interviewer to like you. In that study, they found that those who focused on ingratiation were twice as likely to be hired. Sad, but true. By the way, it's not only candidates or employees who this matters for, it matters for leaders too. Another study looked at leaders and had their employees evaluate them on a number of characteristics. Ones that had nothing to do with personality or likability or any of it, just straight up leadership characteristics. The study showed that if they liked their leader, they would rate them more highly. If they didn't, the results on these leadership characteristics plummeted. So in short, likability is a strategic advantage, but there is one major problem with likability as a strategy for your life, at least there was for me. I spent my entire career, <laughs> I spent my entire life focused on the external validation of others. And in that process, I completely lost touch with what I wanted and what I needed. I was no longer able to hear the voice of my intuition. Now, if you think about intuition, that's something that's typically like dismissed as woo-woo. That's a woo-woo thing, intuition. It's very fuzzy. But there's actually a deep neurological basis for it. When you're using your intuition, your brain works in tandem with your gut to quickly assess what to do based on your learnings, past experiences, the safety around you, all of it. It's not just, oh, how you feel. It's your brain and your gut working together. And I had lost that ability to find my intuition. I had lost the ability to hear the whisper of my own voice. Now, I was used to hearing whispers in my head, and maybe you guys are too. You may know this whisper. It's the one before you go into a job interview that says, you're not qualified for that. It's the one when you're going and asking for more money. No, you, you don't deserve that. It's the who do you think you are voice. And that voice, I was trained to hear really loud and clear. But I needed to hear a different kind of whisper. The first time I actually heard it, was rather bizarre. I was on a webinar, and it was endless. It was about the state of women-owned businesses. I was still running Likeable. 
And I'm sitting there and I, I hear this stat. The stat is that women are opening businesses at twice the rate of the population. Twice the rate of the population, women are opening businesses. And yet, they are delivering half the revenues of their male peers and even less of the profits, even less than half. When I heard that, I felt myself step into my own silence. I felt myself remove every external voice. And I heard something, which was, Carrie, you have built a really substantial business here, and it was hard. And guess what? When you're listening to this, it's pretty unusual for a woman to do that, apparently. And yet, you don't want to do it anymore. You don't want to do it anymore. What? I started listening and panicking <laughs> and hearing the following. Carrie, if these businesses are making less at the end of the day, when they go to sell, they'll be valued for less at the end of the day. Just like there's a wage gap or a wealth gap, there's probably also an exit gap. Maybe you need to sell your business for a lot of money, and maybe you need to help other women learn that they can do that too. So I sat there in that silence with that terrifying thought, and of course, immediately, there were lots of whispers. There was the whisper of the remembering of the guy I met who worked in private equity who told me that women-owned businesses sell for less because when they sell, they lose their women-owned business status. Because as we all know, the only reason a woman is successful is because of her minority or women-owned business status card that she holds. The other whisper was the whisper of my own fear, which was that Likeable had provided the consistent income for our family for years. And if I sold it, yes, I'd get a lump sum, but I'd spend it down and I could be a failure and never do anything again and I would be broke and a huge failure. These thoughts could have paralyzed me, but I stepped out of myself and I said, you heard something and this is what you need to do. As I started that process, I started listening for the whispers in my life beyond my career. And I started listening to who I actually wanted to spend time with and how I wanted to spend my time. And what I realized was every time I stepped out into a moment of silence for myself, once I learned how to hear it, I couldn't unhear it. I remember when it was time to sell Likeable. I was sitting in a room full of men, and by the way, ladies, if you ever get into a situation where you're selling a business, you will always be in a room full of men. And in this case, the men were lovely. I mean, they valued my business. It was great. I mean, they, they couldn't have been nicer. And yet, in my head, all I heard was, this is nuts. You don't deserve it. This isn't real. This isn't going to happen. All of these things. And every time I heard that, I physically, in my body, just for a micro moment, recognized it, stepped out, breathed in, and heard my intuition, which is, you've got this, push forward, you want this. And so my wish for all of you is that every single time you hear in your head, I am not good enough, what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? You take a beat, you breathe, you listen to the intuition, the whisper of your own voice, and you hear for yourself, here's what I want, here's why I want it, and now I'm gonna go get it. Thank you.